This organization took the name of another and declared war. Took the colors of another organization and declared war on them. Pretty ballsy move. Let's get into this video. In a city known for its fearsome super gangs, criminal enterprise like the mob, gangs, Chicago has its own culture from graffiti on the walls to how the south side and the north side are separated. In Chicago, it's where you're born that defines who you are, not your race. This is gang life. Cartel got me working for the big faces. Federally got my car full of brick cases. Hit the pin with a grin, there ain't no faking. I was picked to my back for my shoelaces. Got out, should have seen the look on they faces. All jealous cause your boy stacking hella paper. Set up by the crew, they done put a banger. In the trunk of my car and left me to hang there. No thing, then attorney went and beat the case. Got a job digging holes for minimum wage. Had a dream that Cato said he proud of me. Stay here, don't leave, keep doing your thing. Quit the drugs, but you know what? Went back to selling, six time failing. I went back to prison, got my head right, got my bread right. Push these weights like a kilo in a tailpipe. Trying to do right, I got a mission. Trying to give back to my boys in the prison. The old me's gone, I ain't never gonna miss them. From wrong to strong, stay true to the vision. From wrong to, to strong, from wrong to strong, from wrong to, to strong, from wrong to strong. Hey, what's up? My name's JC. I am Ron Strong. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss nothing. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, you already know. So until I saw one, let's take a ride to the north side. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Gang Life. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. We got an interesting one today, man. This organization would feel the wrath of the land king and the warlords but they would hit back and viciously carve their name into concrete making a name for themselves in the hard streets of chicago yes sir we are talking about the milwaukee kings yes i had uh my run-in with them not in a bad way but i'll get to that in a little bit born in 1969 by the Ramos family. It, it said that the land kings were, were pushing too hard. They were pushing the Ramos to turn kings. Obviously, a lot of people don't like that. We did that. We did that a couple of times with the, with the guys who used to hang out on 58th and Hamlin, and they ended up all turning land kings. You know, the SDs kept going over there, fucking with them, fucking with them, pushing, pushing hard, and they ended up hating us and i think this is what happened with the ramos family they ended up pushing too hard and the ramos said no they took the name and and them living on milwaukee the milwaukee kings came to life milwaukee avenue is on the north side of chicago and a lot of these organizations in chicago have taken names of parks streets uh facilities where they hang out at so that's how a lot of these names uh came to life it's pro it used to be primarily a puerto rican gang now it's completely mixed there's a lot of mexicans there's some blacks there's, you know it, it, it's not how it used to be before i've told you guys in the in the past you know way back in the 60s even into the 70s a lot of these gangs were you know split through neighborhoods and race mexican gangs puerto rican gangs and latin kings being one of the first organizations out there that were latino because they were started by a puerto rican and a mexican uh they got really big really fast so all these other gangs started popping up everywhere they say that they took the colors from the warlords you know their colors are black and orange my favorite colors <laughs> <laughs> and the warlords were very strong allies with the land kings so you know there must have been some kind of history there there must have been something going on in 1979 they joined the maniac alliance and that's you know all the families all the organizations in the north side had these little alliances that they formed together you know the maniacs the insane they, they all had these little groups that they stayed together because 
I mean, let's be real. Like I said it, the Land Kings were really, really big. Every yard that I went to, it would take all the land folks to be together. And when I say land folks, it's all the guys that were folks that ride with the six point star. It would take all of us to be together in order to match the numbers of the Land Kings on the yards because they really didn't need to be with nobody because they were they were big. They had a lot, a lot of members in, in the prison system. In 1980, they joined the Folks Alliance in the prison system. In 19, I remember in 1994, they, they went to war with the SDs, but before I go into that, I remember we used to go to the north side. I, I, I can't remember what street it was, but it was the north side SDs, and there was these two twin brothers that had it for them on the north side. But the Milwaukee Kings were always on the block with us. Like we were really, really tight with them at one time. Um, they showed a lot of love. They backed us up. Uh, I mean, every time we went on that street, I just, I just remember taking, I don't know if it was Western straight down, but we would get somewhere over there by Ohio. And I remember very, very specifically, it was two twin brothers that had it for the SDs on the North side, you know, and, um, I would always see the uh, Milwaukee Kings out there, you know, wearing orange. They were down ass motherfuckers. They were always out there. But like I said, in 94, we went to war with them. It had to be a conflict about a lot of things happened. You know, uh, being on the, sharing turf with another organization is a ticking time back because it's only a matter of time before something doesn't align the way that one organization feels it or the other. In 1995, the same thing happened. They had a conflict with the Maniac Land Disciples causing the Milwaukee Kings to leave the Maniac family. And from this day on, they would stand alone after this. They wouldn't join no alliance with nobody. They try to open up a hood in Cicero, more war than growth. And what I mean by that is Cicero has always been a very, very, I, I, you know, I said suburb the other day, but it's it's connected to Chicago. It's it's a it's a it's a city, and it's right next to Chicago. But it's a very very hard little small city to take over because there's so many gangs that have set up their flag there, and they've been there for many many years, many many years. Like the two six, the two two boys. You know, there's gangs that have went extinct that are no longer there, or they're just not big. It's it's a very unique city. Remember, this is a city that Al Capone, you know, owned for a very long time. So a lot of these guys that used to be gang members, like 12th Street players especially, they grow, grew up and became cops. That's the thing about Chicago, is that a lot of the organizations infiltrate a lot of these, you know, so-called places where you're not supposed to be a criminal, you know, uh, cops, uh, CEOs at Cook County Jail, uh, CEOs at the prisons, they infiltrate lawyers, uh, all kinds of areas that you really don't see in other organizations because they push more of that street life. And a lot of these organizations in Chicago actually push the whole like opening up your business, buying real estate in your neighborhood so that way they'll never be able to push you out. You own your hood so you know at the end of the day Cicero was a really bad investment for them because they lost a lot of members they went to war with gangs that they weren't at war with but they did make a name for themselves you know they they did cause some chaos and there wasn't even that many of them it was almost, almost only like I could say only seven or thirteen members at the most this is when you know, a lot of the gangs were moving into Cicero in the early 90s trying to carve up space for themselves. But like I said, it's a very, very hard neighborhood to take over because there's really nowhere to hang out. <laughs> Everybody would go to like Riverside Mall and get into fights and get arrested. And it, it was just a different, it wasn't the city. You know what I mean? It wasn't the city. But at the end of the day, the Milwaukee Kings have defended many of their hoods like M-Town pretty much to the death and they're they're known to be ruthless and at the end of the day it's been shown that they didn't need no allies to survive and and that's what it is you know some organizations stand alone 
Uh, there's Clutch and Deuces. There's, there's a lot of organizations that have, you know, stand alone and have survived the test of time and war because it's not easy being a small block and taking on, you know, armies. But with a couple of down ass motherfuckers, it is possible. Hey, I told you guys day in and day out. I share this because it's history. We're not glorifying the whole gang life or culture. We are giving you an insight of how we grew up. If we don't tell you how we grew up, then you'll never know what Chicago used to be. Chicago is changing a lot now. You have hipsters, you have this, you know, people coming in, changing the neighborhood. And, and that's good, that's good. It's good because change is good. And hopefully the, the Latinos killing Latinos, Latinos killing blacks, blacks killing Latinos, all this will stop because at the end of the day, everybody matters. You shouldn't be taking lives. You shouldn't be going to prison. You shouldn't be on the streets begging for money for drugs. You shouldn't be doing all this stuff that's really, really, at the end of the day, it's just self-destruction. That's all it is. These videos are meant to inform you of how the gang culture evolved from the 60s, 70s, 80s, all the way into today. Today, yes, it is crazy on the streets. It is uh, kids killing kids. Has there always been killings? There's always been killings. Chicago has always been really, really, really bad. I don't care what anybody says. It's always been bad since the 60s, 50s. It doesn't matter. I don't know what's in the water out there, but Chicago creates some gangster ass motherfuckers and that's just what it is. My next episode is going to be about the grill gang culture in Chicago because the grills actually went really, really hard also. And it's, once, it's, it's a video that I've been wanting to highlight and get out there and just share, share my story. That's all it is. Wrong to strong is many, many things. It's prison, it's cartel, gang. It is change. Wrong to strong. The name says it. My name's JC. I am wrong or strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live. Live it out here. Not gang banging, not using drugs, not hating. Just live your life. Be good to others. It costs you nothing. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.